Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 51 of the Bill Podcast and in this episode we'll be going through SVG or rather Scalable Vector Graphics. Now before we go on, a couple of sentences about the entire redesign. So it was episode 50 and it has been about a year so I decided to redesign the entire website. If you are subscribing via other channels, do stop by and uh, you're welcome to give me feedback. Just to note that the YouTube channel URL has been changed and I have also added on a new Twitter account. So go ahead and subscribe to Bill Podcast using one of these six channels. Before we go in depth uh, to learning what is SVG, I would recommend episode 50 DOM or rather document object model as a prerequisite. All right, so let's briefly check out some important websites related to SVG. The very first one is definitely the specification document by W3C. So do check out version 1.1, which is the latest version for SVG. The second one, I really like the Mozilla Developer Network's documentation on SVG. It has a lot of tutorials which will get us covered and get quickly up to date with what's going on in SVG. The third one, is the document in webplatform.org. It is very similar to MDN, but it's also worth it to go through this document as well. And finally, why should we be using SVG or rather what are some of the advantages? In this article uh, by Hong Kiet, I found several good advantages. For example, the first one is resolution independent. So no matter how you zoom in or zoom out, it will not break because it is not pixel based. It will also help us reduce HTTP requests because you can embed SVG tags in our HTML document. Thirdly, you can also style and script it, which means CSS and JavaScript. You will also be able to animate and edit it and also a smaller file size. Throughout this episode, we will be covering a lot of these so that you can get an idea of these advantages. Let's briefly look at our project for this episode. So we'll be creating this very simple page, but if you notice, none of these are images, none at all. And if you kind of zoom in a lot, yes, the motor molecule is uh, text and therefore it is not breaking up, it is vector. You will also find that this little microscope is also not breaking up because it is SVG. And if you come down, if you look at the 3D structure of water molecule, you'll find even the gradients and the crystal clear circular lines of the circles. Nothing is breaking. So SVG is definitely, as we discovered uh, earlier in the article, it is resolution independent. So let's uh, go ahead and create this little project. So firstly, here I am in my desktop in a folder called water molecule, which is completely empty as of now. So using the HTTP simple Python server, I will just fire up a server. And over here, let's create a first file, which will be called simply index.html. So I have uh, started the live reload as well. So whatever I'm coding here upon saving, you will immediately see the change here. So let's put up a very simple structure for HTML. And yep, that's all we need to start SVG. So all we need is the tag SVG. And inside here, our document or rather the diagram will reside. Why don't we start with a very simple one? And that will be simply line. So for line, there is a tag in SVG called line. So obviously when I put a line, nothing will come up here because I have not described anything about this line. So first, let me start off with the X coordinate, the starting point. Let's just start at zero. Then I will start with the Y coordinate starting point and why don't we start at zero as well. And how about a horizontal line? So in this case, the X coordinate will increase. Let's just put 200 and the Y coordinate will just remain at zero. Looks like we do not see anything as yet. Well, this is because we need to define the stroke or rather the color. So in this case, I will just put in a CSS color and call it black. And there you go, you will see a very thin line. Too thin, isn't it? Why don't we increase the stroke width? And with a width of 10, there you go, you will see our very first SVG. Isn't it really, really simple? 
Now you can either embed this entire SVG code into the HTML file directly or if it is a bit too complicated or for some reason you want to segregate it, you can do so. So I'm just going to cut off this entire code and instead of that, I'm just going to create an image tag and let me just call it line.svg. Obviously the image doesn't exist yet and that is why you're having this error here. So let's create a new file and call it line.svg and I'm basically going to paste in the same code. If you notice here, the image or rather the SVG is still not being displayed. Well, this is because we need to put in some attributes for SVG. The very first one that we'll put in is the version number and for us it is 1.1. Next, it is also good to define the width and the height. So why don't we put width as 300 and then the height as 200. And I'll also put in another attribute which will basically point to the W3C's SVG URL. And now when I refresh, there you go, you will see this line which is basically pointing to just a file. So let's start editing this file line.svg instead of a horizontal line. Why don't we create a slightly slanted line? So I'm just going to change the Y coordinate here and there you go, you will see a slanted line. Now the cool thing about SVG is even if you change the dimension, so let's say this case, let's just try 700. It's going to become a very huge slanted line, but notice that the diagram does not break because each of the lines are defined as equations and not in pixel form. So why don't we go ahead and explore more shapes. The next one that we will explore is called something like polyline. So this is where instead of just two points, you can basically have a lot of points and build a shape with it. Let's start with the points attribute and over here, let's define the very first one. And we will start with say 0 and 50. Well, obviously nothing can be seen because it's just a dot. And let's uh, stretch it to 50, 50. Of course, uh, these pair of numbers are X and Y coordinates. Well, we still don't see something, do we? So why don't we just add some styling? So for this, let's add some fill. Still nothing. So let me just go ahead and say stroke. And finally, let's give it a stroke width. So let me go ahead and add a third point to it. How about 60 and 100? And there you go. Immediately, you will see the three points being defined with a fill color. And I made a slight mistake in the color name. And there you go. You will also see the stroke color being cornflower blue. Great. So let me go ahead and add on a few more points. So let's say 110 and 100. And what about one more? The last one, let's say 120, comma 150. So this is basically how you will create a polyline using a number of coordinate points in the X and the Y axis. Great. So after line and polyline, let's experiment with something called a rectangle, which will help us create rectangles. So for that, the tag is simply R-E-C-T. Let's first start with the width and height, and that will give us a default black color. Why don't we put in some styling? So the fill color will be dark sea green. And let's give it a stroke and finally say stroke width. All right. So as you can see that the rectangle will start right at the corner or rather the top left hand corner. If you want to start from another position, which is not from the origin, all you need to do is add in attributes called X. Let's start with 100 and you'll be seeing the rectangle shift by 100 in the X direction. And let's give it a Y attribute How about 100 as well. And you will see it coming down by 100. Great. And lastly, a little bit about the rectangle will be how to create curved corners. For this, we will simply have RX and let's add it as 20. And let's have RY as a 20 as well. Now, just to give a little bit of perspective of what RY and RX does, if you see when RX is a huge number 200, which means to say that the curvature in the X direction spans 200 and in the Y direction spans only 20. Great. So that was a little bit about a rectangle. Let's move on to circle for which the tag is simply circle. Now to create the simplest circle, let's create one with a radius of 100. And why don't we give it a fill of say hot pink? 
A little bit of inspecting element will tell us that this circle has a diameter of 200 pixel and radius of 100 pixel. So why don't we style it a little bit with a stroke of black and a stroke width of say 5. Obviously at this point of time we want to move the circle a little bit away from the origin. So for this we will add in the attributes CY and CX. So let's just put in 110. And it will move in the X direction and CY and there you go you will see the full circle. Let's move on to something similar but it is ellipse. So for ellipse we will have uh, two different types of radiuses. So one is in the X direction. Obviously nothing will come out because we have not defined the Y direction. Similarly just like the circle why don't we move it away from the origin. Just a little change in the ry attribute as well and finally let's add in some styling and there you go with a little bit of fill stroke and stroke width next we will go through polygon so very similar to the polyline we also have various points to define the corners of the polygon let's start with the very first one which is 0 90 well yes nothing will be seen because we will also need the next coordinate point Nothing as of yet, why don't we give it some styling? And there you go, the very first line is appearing here. So why don't we go ahead and create a third point so we can also see the fill color. Great, so that's a triangle. Let's go on to add the next point, the next one, the next one. And with the final point, we have a perfect hexagon. As the last shape, we will go through something called the path. Now path is pretty unique because it will allow us to create various different lines as well as curves. So to define the path we will start with the attribute called D and then typically the common ones are M which is like move to let's say move to 10 10 which is also X and Y coordinate. Let's give it some styling as well. We will also draw a line. So line to 150 in the X direction and 0 in the Y direction. Let's see how the line comes up. So this might be a little confusing at the beginning. So this basically means that start at 0, 0, so move to 0, 0 without drawing anything and then draw a line 150 in the X direction and 0 in the Y direction. Let's uh, start, uh, let's continue a little bit. So I will once again say move to 30 and 30 and each of the point coordinates uh, do bear in mind that these are relative to the previous one so this just means to say move to 30 30 uh, as compared to this end of the line obviously you won't see anything until i draw one more so why don't we draw 150 and 0 which means 150 a horizontal line one more time so there you go this was displaced by 10 10 and this was displayed by 30 30. You also can create curves with uh, different equations for simplicity uh, let me just move to 100 and 250 first and then with S I will define the curve which is something like this. Now drawing a curve with SVG is really fascinating but I really really recommend going through some kind of documentation for various of the curves and lines. We will really have to go through and know what each of the curve handles do in order to create a curve that we desire. And as a final note we will create something called text. So why don't we write SVG. Once again nothing can be seen until we put the attribute. So I'm just going to shift from the origin and let me just put it as 200 in the X direction and 200 in the Y direction. And there you go you will see a very small SVG. So if you want to manipulate the style so if you have uh, any need to input in some text this is how you can do it with the text tag. Great so I think we have covered a lot of the shapes and text. Next uh, let's go on to something called filters and in this case uh, let me come back and draw a rectangle for us. And why don't we try to create a shadow for this rectangle. So for this shadow I'll create another rectangle here. But uh, notice uh, this rectangle at the back you will see right here is displayed by a little bit. So here it is uh, 100 but uh, in the original square 
or rectangle, it is 95. So you will barely see it. So why don't we go ahead and style this rectangle by giving it some filters and we will basically add some blurring. So in order to have some uh, reference elements in SVG, we use a tag called DEFS. And inside here, I will create another tag called filter. And inside the filter tag, according to the specification, you can apply a lot of filters. So why don't we apply a filter called FE Gaussian Blur? And inside here, I'll add in an attribute called Source Alpha and another attribute called standard deviation which will basically dictate the amount of blurring. I'll just put it as 5. Now how do we apply this filter that we described here onto the first rectangle or the rectangle that is covered by the main one? So for this to work we have to give an ID very much like CSS and HTML actually. So ID for this, let's just give it a name as fading. So how do we apply this fading filter to this rectangle? Well, for this, we apply the attribute called filter here and we say URL and then we say hash fading, which is the name of the filter that we just created. And there you go, you will see the rectangle very crystal clear because it is a vector diagram with a very subtle shadow at the back. Finally, let's play with some gradients. For this, I will bring back a circle and very similar to the filter or the blurring filter that I added, I will describe it in a gradient called sunrise. So very similar to our blurring effect, I will start with a DEFS tag and inside here, I will simply say linear gradient. Let's give it an ID of say sunrise and in the X one direction, let's uh, give it displacement of just 0%. Y1 direction will also be 0%. So basically this will describe how the gradient is flowing. So it will have to have a stop point. So for us, uh, let's just give it also say 0%, which means it will be a vertical gradient and we will just stretch it to full. Now it might be a little bit difficult to visualize. Ju so just follow me through. Uh, as we describe the stop colors. So the first stop offset, let's have it at 0%. And to start off, we will have the stop color, say starting at red. And we will also give it an opacity of say one. Let's close this. Now we will also repeat it a few times. So I'm gonna have a second and a third one. The second gradient color will start at 50% and the last one will start at 100%. So the first color is red, the second color, let's have it as orange. And the last one, let's have it at yellow. And there you go, our sunrise filter is added to the circle. Very similar to, let's say, CSS3 gradients if uh, we have worked on it. So with a little bit of uh, this background on SVG, let's now build the project. So let me start with a completely new blank canvas with just some body parameters uh, styling for margin and width. And very simply, we will add in the heading and call it water molecule. Why don't we add some styling to this water molecule? Now after this, we will go ahead and get this uh, little picture, the microscope picture. And for this, I will go to the website, The Noun Project. You can get a lot of uh, SVG pictures like this. So currently in my folder, I just have a line.svg that we previously created and this file index.html. So let me bring in the SVG file. And there you go, I have added in lab.svg. And if you click lab.svg inside here, you will see something really familiar. There you go, you see the path tag, the RECT rectangle tag. So why don't we go ahead and embed this? So to embed it, we can embed it as an image. Very simply, lab.svg. And there you go, you will see the little microscope here. Now you can even go ahead and play with the width here. So let's just put it, say, at 400. And even when you are making it bigger, notice here, nothing is fading or breaking up. It is crystal clear outlined. So instead of adding in the width as inline styles, uh, I'll just add in a class and call it small. Now the cool thing about playing with this kind of S SVG file is that so if you go ahead and open it in the URL and inspect element once again, 
yep, you will be able to play with the SVG itself. So let me zoom in a little bit and let's open this up. So there you see, you will see the little rectangle, which is the basically the microscope. And why don't we add in something here? So let's say after X and Y, let's add in a stroke. How about color red? And once you do that, notice that you have just edited an SVG file. It is as simple as that. And this time, let's move on and create two files. The first file, I will also embed it as an image within a section tag and call it covalent.svg. Obviously, the image is not created as of now, and that is why it's giving an error. So let me just create a new file. And just like previously, we will start with the SVG tag with some attributes such as version, height, and width. Next, let's create the four circles very simply. So I'll just cut and paste the four circles here. This should seem really familiar to you. And there you go. You cannot see the fourth circle because it is right here. Obviously, we need to kind of style it. So in order to style it, we can put in embedded CSS in the SVG file. So for this, let's start with the DFS tag. And inside here, we will add the styles starting with the style tag. And inside the style tag, let me first give a very little background to the entire SVG document, something like this. And if you refresh, the beige color is seen. Next, I'm going to style the circle tags. So for this, I have given it a fill as none and uh, stroke is black and stroke width is three. And there you go. You see all the circles here. Next, we will create all the little red electrons for the oxygen molecule. Now for SVG, you can have this tag called G to kind of group it. So all the oxygen molecules, I'm going to put it under this G and give it an ID called electrons. Very similar to the circles that we have already created. Let me cut and paste all the electrons here. Now we do want this electrons to be styled differently from the circle tag. So for this case, all we need to do is come up uh, to the style section and then simply call electrons and then within the electrons, the circle tag. And this is where we can define it as, hey, it should be fill red and stroke none. Great. So now that our electrons are defined, why don't we go ahead and define another set of electrons for the hydrogen atom? And we will just give it an ID of pairing electrons. So just like how we style the previous electrons, we will similarly go ahead and call it pairing electrons and then circle tag. And in this case, we'll give it a fill green. Looks like I have a little spelling mistake. There shouldn't be any S. And now when I refresh, Great, so there you have it, all the electrons. And finally, we will have to put in the text. So for this, I'll come back right at the bottom and put in the text tags. And this should be also very familiar to you. And finally, just to have the text as all sans-serif, I'll just come up right at the top and put the text as Helvetica. And yep, so that is our water molecule. Why don't we go ahead and play with the next diagram, which consists of 3D. Once again, I'll come up right here and create image tag and call it 3D. Let's create a new file called SVG with the name 3D. Very similarly, we will start off with the SVG tag. And just like before, I will also include some inline styles just to say, hey, the background is beige and the circle has this styling. Let's refresh it. And there is obviously nothing here as of now. Firstly, let me go ahead and create the two molecules or rather circles for the hydrogen atom. I'll just put this one at the top so that upon refresh, we can see it immediately. All right. So those are the th two circles, the hydrogen atom. Now, obviously, we will need to put in uh, some styling to it. Our original project shows that, hey, there's even a little gradient. And when we finally click the oxygen atom, notice that how it will change its size. Yep, that is what we'll be doing with JavaScript. Great. So in order to create this gradient, we will start another uh, section for DFS. And in this case, it will simply be radial gradient so that we can reference it later on. Why don't we give it a name called hydrogen? And in the X direction, it will be 25%. And in the Y direction, it will start at 25%. 
And finally, let's define the colors. So let's start with the first offset at 10% and stop color. I'll just simply say it's 10. Great, and apart, apart from this color, we will also have a second color. And this will be offset at 95% and let's call it red. Now, obviously, upon refreshing, you will still not see the radial gradients here. Well, that's because we need to tell this circle tags where are the radial gradients. So to do that, we will have to include a style attribute. And that simply says, hey, fill it up with the following URL, which is basically hash hydrogen. And there you go, you will see the hydrogen atom with radial gradients. Let's do something really similar with the oxygen atom. Firstly, I'll insert in the radial gradient. This time I'll give it an ID of oxygen. And the offset will be from black to blue. And also I will start with the circle tag and say, hey, the style should refer to ID oxygen, which is defined right here. So that was about the 3D 3D water molecule, but notice here when I'm clicking, it is not interactive. The cool thing about adding SVG is that we can access these tags and make it interactive. So let's try to query it. Document.get element by ID. Well, that would be a good idea. So why don't I go ahead and give this uh, image an ID of say water? All right, so get element by ID. Let me refresh it. Why don't I call water? Now notice here when water is returned, it is an image tag and there is no way to access the sort of uh, elements inside or rather the tags inside this SVG document. So for this purpose, we will basically replace the image tag with something called the object tag, right? So let me delete away the image tag and I will replace it with an object tag which will have a type of image slash SVG plus XML. The data will still refer to the same file and the ID is still water. Great, so why don't we go ahead and query get element by water this time and notice here we have object coming up, but this is expandable and once we expand and there you go, you will see the entire SVG and all the circles right here. This is how we'll be able to manipulate with JavaScript. So I'm gonna come right to the bottom here once again. And this time create a script tag. So here, very simply, I will create a variable. So let's call it var svg equals to something very similar to what we queried in the console. Now for the purpose of this little example, we will have to find this blue circle. So how do we get that? I'm gonna start with the water and let's try to get elements by tag name. Oops, I obviously have to pass in the tag name and let's call it circle. Looks like I'm not getting it. Well, that's because water is referring to the entire object. We need to get inside the document. So for this, we need to do content document. And now when we do that, yep, the entire document is shown. So after dot content document, now if we do get elements by tag name and this time let's pass in circle and uh, there you go we will see all the three circles right here let me clear the console and this time i will just uh, take the third one which is index two and there you go the oxygen molecule is right here and i can even go ahead and uh, change the radius by using javascript so let's go ahead and do this in our script. So I'll do SVG and this time I'll do add event listener. Now because the SVG is being loaded asynchronously, we will have to pass in add event listener on load. So on load, we will pass in and do all the interactions with the SVG inside this. So let's start with the very first one. So let's say SVG doc as a variable. And this will basically be SVG dot content document exactly like what we did in our console. And let's also query oxygen. And this will basically be SVG doc dot get elements. I'll basically copy this entire thing here and say it's circle and I'll get the third one. Why don't I console log oxygen? Am I getting the right one? Just to check. 
and upon refresh yep i am getting the right one great so i'll just comment away this console log and next we will add a click event so i'll say oxygen dot add event listener this time it will be upon click so here i'll say if oxygen dot get attribute and we know that one of the attribute is r so we'll say r equals to 100 then we will simply say change the attribute so we'll say set attribute we will target r and just change it to 95 just reduce it else for example if it is already 95 we will simply say oxygen dot set attribute and bring it back to 100 and now when i refresh and i click this blue circle guess what yep it is being console logged as clicked just how we coded but also look at the radius it is increasing and decreasing with every other click finally i'll just add on some css for a section so that these two will just come side by side and as usual you can also add in a class here and call it large and proportionately you will find your picture becoming bigger without any distortion of the pixel so that was a little bit about our project today on SVG. I hope it gave you a brief overview about the various shapes and lines and colors, gradients, filters, and even a little bit of JavaScript interactivity that you can add to it. Very briefly, some links related to SVG. One of them is by Chris Coyer on CSS Tricks using SVG. Do give a read through it. There are also some JavaScript libraries such as Raphael JS which basically simplifies our work with vector graphics on the web. I also found this article resolution independence with SVG useful. Also do understand that if you are using slightly more complicated uh, graphics, such as this Kiwi or even uh, more complications, you probably will not use the browser to kind of design it. There are other graphic editors, for example, Inkscape, which is completely open source, as well as Adobe Illustrator. I also highly recommend you to go through this tutorial on the web platform.org, which kind of goes through into building this uh, eyeball. Finally, for the build link of the episode, I will choose nodeschool.io. So this is basically a command line way to kind of learn Node. So for example, if you click the very first one, it will give us the NPM module that you can install right in a command line and run, say, learn you Node and then basically follow the instructions. What I also like about it is that it is based on a framework to make a lesson. It was created by Rod Vag and it's called as Workshopper. If you use Workshopper, it will come up as a very beautiful terminal uh, interface such as this and it will basically say which are completed as you go through the exercises. So do go through nodeschool.io if you're interested in Node. If not, you can also use Workshopper to create lessons for others. So that's it for this week's episode of Bill Podcast. For the rest of the Bill Podcast, you can go ahead and check out other episodes with an easy search button or even subscribe via the six channels RSS, iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, GitHub or Twitter. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.